Hey everyone, this is Chess Coach Aaron. How you doing? And I'm here today to do five puzzles, chess kid puzzles that I did wrong to go over them with you guys. I've been trying to do my 50 puzzles a week, 50 correct on chess kid, just like all the students that we work with are supposed to be trying to do. That's the goal. At least 50 correct. And they start getting harder and harder. I love chess kid puzzles. So you can see I've logged in and in the upper right over here is Coach Aaron. That's me. And you can see I'm at Chess Kid. And now when you're at the home page here, you go to Puzzles. And you can click Start and start on your puzzles. But before you do that, you scroll down. And on the right over here, you'll see your rating, number solved correctly, and number of attempted. So you can see this is my third week doing this. And every time I get 50 correct, I stop. And as I'm getting some of them wrong, I'm going to be doing some of these videos with you guys. I thought it'd be a lot of fun to check out uh, which ones Coach Aaron did wrong. And not only am I going to learn from them, I can still keep learning too. That's why I do puzzles. But you too, you can see where I went wrong, what I was thinking. And this is common stuff uh, for most chess players, where they go wrong when they're thinking in chess games and chess puzzles. All right, so let's get to our first position. All right, position number one on Chess Kid that I got wrong for this week. Now, you notice this one is straight out of the opening. I mean, we've only done four moves for white, three moves for black. It's move four for black. And before I go further, I'm going to remind you guys I have my little pause sign. So there are going to be times I say to pause this video and try to work it out yourself for a moment. And I usually give you guys, you know, three seconds to pause stuff. So this is already move uh, number four for black. We're right out of the opening. So go ahead and pause it. And then we'll start talking. Three, two, one. All right. So you can already kind of see it looks like white might have made a mistake, right? They moved their bishop, pinning this knight. Or maybe the mistake was they played b3 here. After all, b3 means c3 is not supported. And this bishop is not supported. One of the things you look at when you're playing chess and when you see new puzzles is what is not protected. Well, the bishop on b5 is definitely not protected. So my first thought was queen a5 will win the bishop. After all, if the knight goes to c3 to protect it, it's not protected. So queen a5 check, knight c3, and now I can take the knight in c3 with check. But I thought to myself, this is a little too easy. How easy is this puzzle? That can't be that easy. So let's look a little bit further. I got to be missing something. And I start thinking, well, my queen is on c3 and they've lost a knight. Boom, boom, right? But my queen's on c3 and I figured, can white do anything about my queen? They're down a piece, but my queen is already in their territory. And nothing else is gone, which means white still has a lot of pieces to kind of threaten and entrap my queen. And I was very nervous about being trapped. So I figured, how are they going to proceed? All right, so queen a5 check. Knight c3. Queen capture c3 check. So then I figured, what about bishop d2? After all, if my queen on c3 and it's knight gone, I'm threatening their rook. And I'm saying check. Well, the obvious move is bishop to d2 to block. And takes away all these squares from my queen on c3 to run away. And again, I'm not really moving anything because we're trying to look ahead. This is what I was thinking right now. I hadn't moved anything yet. This is what I'm thinking. Queen a5 check. Knight c3 blocking. Queen takes c3 check. Bishop d2 attacking the queen and protecting their rook on a1. And the only safe move I saw was queen going to b2 and now i said well can my queen still escape is there something i'm missing bishop can't go back to c1 to attack because that would cut off protection of the rook and i would take the rook but i realized all right bishop d2 queen b2 and i said oh no this rook can attack b1 i capture goes back to a1 back and forth back and forth let's go to the analysis page and i'll show you exactly what i'm talking about this is what i saw Queen check, knight block and c3, capture, bishop d2. Now my queen only has one safe spot, and that is, whoop, well, let's widen this up a bit so you can see these moves, right? And hold on one moment. Sorry about that. There we go. So you can see the moves. The only safe spot is queen going to b2. And then I said, oh, no, rook will go to b1. Uh, I'll capture. Queen takes a2. And rook a1, 
Queen b2, rook b2, back and forth. Can I go to a3 instead and escape? No, I can't. I have to go back. And I figured, you know what? This is just a perpetual type of idea. Not perpetual check, because there's no checks with the king. It's attacking the queen, but perpetual attack on the queen. And we're just going to have three repetitions. And it's just going to be a draw. We're just going to repeat the position. My queen can't escape. So I realized, or I thought I realized, <laughs> that queen here and winning a piece on c3 actually doesn't work check knight here and i said okay it's just going to be a draw because of this i figured that can't be right even though this is so obviously a mistake right b3 and the bishop there how am i going to win anything it's just a draw we're trying to win the game so i said all right and i look for other moves and i played it but let's see what move did coach aaron miss can you see it from here pause it one more time which move did coach aaron miss Three, two, one. All right. Well, let's go back to the analysis board. And the move I missed is pretty straightforward. Here we are. Attack the queen. And the move is I actually don't have to take the pawn. I can play instead queen a3. And that rook can't keep attacking the queen. And now the queen can always just find one safe spot and get out of the situation. Can capture and run away. Or we can chase the bishop out of here. And once that happens, we have other choices, especially if they capture. But the point is, the queen doesn't have to take a2. Well, now, where is the thinking? Why did I think that? Well, if you look at the starting position, notice this is what happens to many chess players. It's kind of common at the start of this position. Start this puzzle is not one, but two pieces for white guarding a3. I'm actually not thinking about, when I start going into my thought process, I'm not thinking about my queen ending up on a3 at any point. In my mind, it's already protected and covered by white. But is that actually true as this position goes forward? The answer is no. But I stopped thinking that a3 is a square for my queen. So I never played the correct move, which is queen a5 check and winning the knight. All right, let's go on to position number two. I hope you guys got that first position correct. All right, position number two. All right, there's a lot more going on. This is kind of spicy. Both kings are a little windy. Pieces are kind of aiming everywhere. Uh, you can kind of see there is one, hmm, two, hmm, perhaps three, discovered four, five, hmm, another discovered six. There's a lot of possibilities here is what I'm saying. A lot of pieces going in different directions. Right away, I noticed that this bishop was the only thing protecting their knight on d5. So perhaps removing it and putting pressure along here to capture two pieces for the rook or to put pressure on here would be the winning idea. And this is what I started really focusing on. That and along with the idea of knight taking on c2 and unleashing discovered attacks. So these were the two main things I thought were the main spicy winning ideas for black. And I really started focusing on them. I did notice, though, that there are a lot of possibilities. Rook taking on at the right time on e6, for example. Maybe unleashing a bishop over here if I don't capture on g2. And I have to be careful of my rook. And if I'm also not careful, my king is a little windy. The black king is a little windy. Uh, so we just have to kind of be careful. Now, we do notice that the rooks for white are not communicating, and his bishop is not that happy. So black, and it's black's turn, black does have a lot going for it. So I kind of dismissed knight takes on um, c2 immediately. Um, one of the main reasons is I just didn't see enough following up um, afterwards. I thought I could win the exchange. Um, but I didn't like giving up if it ended up being my bishop for this position because their knight is awfully strong and I felt that they could get the exchange back pretty quickly. So I started focusing on rook takes g2. This seemed a little more forcing because the only move, if king takes, I'll get that knight, two pieces plus a winning attack, I thought. Winning possibilities over here, I thought. So the queen is forced to take. So I figured the queen had to take to protect that knight. And I figured I started seeing more possibilities here. Like queen now can enter and put pressure on this rook. And I can swing this other rook over to the g file. 
this knight is still hanging and if they do anything wrong the queen still has to guard c2 i figured the queen would be overloaded and there was too much going on here so this is actually what i ended up playing but white can get away with the rooks attacked white can get away with removing this rook after all i took their uh, bishop i gave up the exchange they actually give it back to kind of save themselves for a moment and yes black might still have a slightly better position um but this is not immediately winning not not the way i want it right they can move their bishop out of the way they cover the back rank for a moment uh or actually i think they have to play c3 first sorry because obviously this bishop is here but they can play c3 the knight's guarding it and once they get the bishop out of the way and the rook out of the way i think they're pretty safe they, we still have some tempos but i didn't see anything forcing enough all right so we back it up we back it up we back it up we back it up and this is another typical thing that happens when you are thinking ahead i started really looking at rook taking bishop right putting all this pressure on this other piece making the queen overloaded perhaps and then playing queen h4 with tempo i thought and bring the other rook over i figured this would be enough but they have this rook takes on e6 to possibly save themselves now that i kind of gave up in my mind the rook takes on g2 i didn't try to look for other maneuvers that add pressure to the sacrifice because rook takes g2 maybe doesn't fully work yet but can you find a way to make it fully work go ahead and pause three two one all righty let's go to the analysis board and the correct move is queen h4 first because now the threat of rook takes g2 is just too strong it's too huge let's say white just does something out of the way but still helps the position a little bit for example we're aiming at the a1 rook through the night let's just say they move over you know that takes away the idea of the knight and the rook perhaps uh knight and the bishop sorry winning the, a rook right so let's just say they do something like this and now rook takes on g2 wins if queen takes we're going to take this rook and we are already cleaning up this is pretty straightforward right and let's say again uh rook takes and let's say they take with the king there's only two choices for the moment queen clean up and what if they take with the king well now we have our tempo they get a rook here and there's just too much going on this is just too strong this is just too strong so if they go back to h1 well we're just picking up this knight and the rook check is much stronger than taking a knight right away because we take over that g line for example where is the king gonna go it can't go to f3 or f2 h1 is probably just gonna lose right away so they go to f1 can you not look at the moves and figure out how to finish them off real quick three two one don't look at the moves well if you see the moves that's okay but try to figure it out and here we just have a forced win also queen h3 check king can't go anywhere except to f2 queen blocking doesn't help that'll be checkmate and we have checkmate using the knight over here so notice that after queen h4 in this position this is just too much now but we did do a move which didn't help so let's look at one last move the move i would say is what if they do knight e3 another protector of the knight takes away the idea of the bishop capturing the knight after we take on g2 what about that well even this move does not actually stop rook takes g2 and again king takes a uh, g2 we have check uh let's see the king can go to f1 this check here still wins and if they put the knight over here and let's take one quick look boop check they run here check but now they have a knight that can block but are we cleaning up at this point mm, i think uh we might be cleaning up and if the king went the other way uh, let's back it up let's back it up rook g check and let's say they go the other way um i believe do we have a win here too hmm thought we had an easy win hold on 
Oh yeah, I don't know why I'm not paying attention to it, but Knight just going to F3 cleans up pretty pretty straight. We can even have fun by taking here on C2 because this Knight on uh, E3 can't really leave the defense of uh, D5 with this Bishop. So Knight F3 just wins. You can even play around a little bit with Knight C take C2 maybe because uh, the Queen is the only thing protecting that. So you can see the difference. I gave up on... The rook takes g2 right away, so I didn't think of other moves that would still use this mechanism of rook takes g2 later. So I didn't really consider queen to h4 properly because I wasn't thinking anymore about rook takes g2. This happens a lot when you're thinking on the positions. All right, let's see if we can move along position number three. All right, position number three, chess kid puzzle, coach Aaron did wrong. Can you see the move you would play? Let's do that right away. Three, two, pause it and try your best. Just try your best. All right. So this is pretty straightforward. We won't spend a lot of time on this particular one, and this is a little embarrassing, but I still feel like I got part of the puzzle correct, some of the ideas about it. Well, white has these two monster pawns. The one on h6 keeps this king trapped, and this one on a7 is so close to the end, it keeps the rook trapped, and we're threatening to move forward if we could ever get the rook out of the way, or if we could magically put a queen on b8. These are some winning moves. They have their bishop, though, guarding this long diagonal, so there is no checkmate right now on g7. That's another problem. The king is so unsafe, and it's trapped. I figured right here everything was safe for the white king for the moment, all I had to do is play rook a2. I'm protecting this pawn still, and I'm attacking the bishop, which, of course, if this bishop leaves this diagonal, I'm going to just checkmate on g7. So I'm attacking the bishop, and through the bishop, I'm skewering the rook, uh, knight. <laughs> the knight with a double attack. I figured once I win this knight on e2, the game is also just over. Now we're going to come down here with a check, and with the king being trapped, this is pretty much game over. So I figured rook a2 has got to be the correct move. So I was close. The correct move, actually, if you go to the analysis board, is instead of that, not rook a2, but rook e1. And this is a lot stronger because we're pinning and we're piling on the pin. We already have the pile on the pin. We just need to pin it. And once we get our rooks doubled and we come down to e8 will check the game is just over and there's no way to stop all this now what is the difference between rook a2 you say good question it actually allows this defense of knight takes f4 which somehow it's a little crazy but somehow black can survive queen takes queen e6 is the key second move because white can't block and the king's got to run around and if the king goes to the wrong spot, especially, notice, we are winning the rook, which we can get away with taking because we cover this diagonal. There are no tricky winning checks for the moment for white after we take this rook. And if the king even goes to the wrong place, well, we could even win their queen instead. And black survives. So it's amazing. Rook a2 allows this amazing resource, which, of course... I didn't see anything like this. This is a tough one to see for black. But knight uh, takes f4 actually gets away with being saved. If, let's say, they take that bishop, then you have knight out of the way check. You're getting some material back. If they block, you're also threatening knight to e5, and you're getting the queen. All right, let's go to the next position. All right, position number four for the chess kid uh, puzzles that Coach Aaron did wrong. And it's white to play. And let's pause it, see what you come up with before we talk. Do, 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 do. Boop, ba -doop, boop. All right. All right, so there really are not a lot of um, different moves worth considering here. And again, I kind of was working on some of the correct ideas, but I didn't put it all together. I'm not quite sure why I didn't, but let's take a quick look. And we can tell that. White has some active pieces, not rooks, though. So it can't really involve the rooks, at least not for a while. But we have an active knight, bishop, and queen, so it has to be a combination of those three. Next, we can see that their pieces, for the most part, are all in the back rank. They do control some squares, but 
pretty much they're all bunched together. The only active piece they have is that bishop. Now I'm looking at tactics, things that should work together. Well, knight f5 is going to attack a bishop and the g pawn. My queen's attacking a g pawn. My bishop is also attacking a d6 bishop. So knight f5 seems to be the key that works with the other two active pieces. Knight f5 works with the bishop against the other bishop on d6, and knight f5 works with the queen capturing on g7. Hmm. Has to be something in there. So that's what I was looking for. So bishop takes, queen takes, knight f5 attacking these two squares, but they can save the queen and protect f8. Didn't see anything else in that line. All right, let's back it up. And now what about if the knight goes there first? Well, this does seem promising. We have the queen aiming at the pawn, and we got two attackers on the bishop. If they move the bishop, perhaps we can create some problems, perhaps. But they actually have, if you look closer, easy ways to defuse everything. If our knight goes to f5, they can just put the c rook in the way, and that kind of just stops everything. Um, even if I try to do some extra stuff here, their bishop seems to be pinned. They actually have a simple move, putting the bishop in a much safer spot. And this really doesn't matter for the pin anymore. There is no true pin because he really can't get through that bishop. Uh, so it's just the queen over here. There's no checkmate threats to g7. And if we back it up, the truth also is not just f5, but if you try to go the other way, well, it can't go to c7 anymore, but it can use the other rook to e7 same type of ideas occur here. So I really was befuddled and I ended up making a hasty move without really being happy with my move. But if we go to the analysis board, you can see real quick, bishop does take first, correct, queen takes, and now knight f5 is the right theme, but you don't play it first. Notice knight f5 targets these two squares. How do we capitalize? Oh, queen takes. But now we're winning a pawn. Are we just winning a pawn and that's it in this puzzle? No, because when our knight lands on d6, it's also a fork of the rooks. So we're winning another pawn and exchange. And this should be good enough to win the game. Whoops. Well, do we want to go to f7? Does it actually really matter? And we're going to win a rook. All right, let's do the last puzzle real quick and be done with this uh, video. You guys are doing great. One more puzzle. All right, position number five. And this actually might be the spiciest in some ways of all five positions. Not that any of these positions were that easy. Maybe the very first one, which is embarrassing, that opening on move number four was a little embarrassing for Coach Aaron for sure. Maybe that was fairly easy, actually. Um... But this is a lot of spice going on. Right away, it's black to move, and we can already see this white have any threats. Why, well, yes, they have a checkmate threat right away on d7. All right, so that's first things first. And if you count up the minor pieces, white's got four, black's got three. So this bishop is here attacking the queen. So it's obvious that the last move by white, or pretty obvious, was probably a capture somewhere over here. And now we have to deal with the checkmate threat and this bishop attacking a queen. So it seems like knight takes um, on e5, protecting the checkmate from d2 and saving the queen. That seems pretty straightforward. So that first move is really what I was focused on. Then I started taking account of everything as best as I could. And I realized, well, that takes away protection from the bishop. Um, but maybe through the night we can get over here at some point if things happen. All right. I also was looking at this battery. We have the rook and queen. Does that help? Um, are there any other choices here to kind of stop everything? Well, we could try to move the queen, I guess, to some place that would block the checkmate. But we're already down at least a piece. So really, I was just looking at... Couldn't find any other ideas, and knight takes on e5. And that seems like the correct answer. But then I started looking, well, what can white do? Yes, they can take this bishop. But I figured, isn't this battery really strong? And even if they take the bishop, is rook over here very strong also with checks? Hmm. And it seemed like the white king is not necessarily that much safer than the black king in this position also. So this is true. So after knight takes, I started thinking, what can white do? Well, we look for forcing moves. Are there captures? Yes. 
but are there anything else? And I said, well, you know what? There is this check over here, and it is kind of annoying. It does aim this way. They already have the rook. They can bring their other rook over if needed, maybe. They might even be able to unleash this bishop. And I start getting a little bit, ooh, this check on h5 might actually be really strong. So I kept looking from the starting position. Knight takes, and what to do against queen? Check. And I kept seeing either knight to f7, rook to f7, didn't see a lot of great answers. I saw some answers, but I realized this rook coming over here would pose some pressure. They might have an unleashed attack by playing c5 or move their c-pawn forward on f7 also. And sooner or later, maybe it would be safe for them to take this bishop, which is hanging. Ah, so I didn't quite see this. I didn't quite get it. What move is Coach Aaron missing? <laughs> and do you find it? All right. So knight takes really is forced. And let's go to analysis board. We really need to capture and cover this checkmate and save our queen. So now what about this check? Well, I kept looking at all the ways to block on f7. And when you're blocking on f7, you're really taking away this power, this battery, the queen going forward and making threats down on f2 perhaps. And with the battery working, the rook can't even go to f1. What I missed and what I wasn't double checking enough from the starting position is not only is there f7 a block, what about g6? So knight g6, and I believe in this position, black has it handily in control. This battery is just too strong. It's very hard for white to take uh, this bishop and survive for long. The other rook can come over, and this is a great position. The computer thinks 3.4, three points uh, or more usually is enough to win, and I don't see a lot of ways for white to save the game from here. So it's a simple move, but if we look at the starting position, I wasn't thinking about this battery enough to keep this battery alive. I did see it, but to keep it alive, and I didn't follow up with after night capture. All I kept thinking about was F7 blocks. I didn't think about G6 blocks. But this is a truly spicy position. Very hard to see, and hopefully you guys found it. All right, one quick joke and we're done. Sorry the video went a little long. One quick joke. Why did the student eat his homework? Was he hungry? Had he played a lot of chess? Because when you play a lot of chess, it makes you hungry. So again, why did the student eat his homework? Well, this is because the teacher said the homework was a piece of cake. <laughs> All right. Chess coach Aaron out. And I hope you got some of those puzzles correct. Peace.